As I mentioned, today we also have the privilege of participating in communion. Now, um, communion for this time around was, uh, is bring your own elements. Um, however, if you were not able to, or you did not know, or you forgot, uh, there's no judgment here or anything like that. <clears throat> there are some um, elements that have been specially um, prepared, uh, sanitarily prepared uh, by coal. Um, and so if you need elements uh, at this time, I would just invite you to raise your hand and uh, those can be uh, brought to you. Wonderful. So we've got a uh, couple up there. <coughs> Excuse me, this is not COVID. And uh, one over here. So we've got like f five. <laughs> you can share. You don't have any. Okay. So you know what? Part of the other thing that we said last week in preparation is that there is uh, there is no judgment here. It's not like it's not like somehow you lose grace if you don't participate in communion on this Sunday or if you participate um, in spirit alone. Um, but yeah, Cole's coming around with whatever he does have, and uh, then we can go from there. In the meantime. <clears throat> I want to remind you uh, about what communion is about. This being uh, the Prophet Sunday, and this being the first Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of Hope, we are particularly reminded as we participate in communion that, that communion is about the past, the present, and the future. It is about the past in that we are remembering the deeds of Christ our Lord as he lived on this earth, earth thousands of years ago. As he walked among us and talked with us and taught us and sacrificed himself for us. But not only are we remembering the past deeds of Christ our Savior who died on the cross for us, not only does this juice and this bread symbolize the blood and body of Christ, we also are remembering the deeds of God throughout history. We are reminded of how God created us. We are reminded with grief and sadness about how we rebelled against God. And we are reminded of how God, though he, he saw the wickedness of the world and though He sent the flood to destroy humankind, He nonetheless saved believing Noah and his family. And then we also remember how throughout history, time and time again, God saves a remnant of his people. And in the Old Testament, that culminates in the, the sacrificial lambs who were given over to spare the people of Israel during the last plague in Egypt where the angel of God came and took the firstborn sons of all the Egyptians, but spared the people of Israel because of the sacrificial blood of the Lamb painted on the door posts of their houses. Now that sacrifice appeared to the Israelites to have saved their children. But we are told in Scripture that in reality, actually, it was the blood of Jesus which saved. It has always been the blood of Jesus which saves. It has always been His sacrifice. And all the other sacrifices could never be enough to actually save us from our sins. Even the smallest and the least 
of our sins. And so we come to Jesus. In Advent, we look forward to His coming as a little baby, knowing all that that will entail, but we also look forward to His coming again. And in the meantime, we recognize that Christ is not Christ is not someone who has done something for us in the past and that is it. No. We serve a risen Savior who is alive and working in the world today. And when we eat and drink, we proclaim Jesus' death and resurrection until He comes again and we also acknowledge that our Savior is alive and well and working in and among us today. We do not believe that the bread and the juice have in and of themselves any particular magical powers. They are just bread and they are just juice. We do believe, however, that in this feast, God, through His Holy Spirit, is present and draws us together as a body of believers in a special way. And we also believe that God, in this moment, through His Spirit, draws us closer to Himself. This feast is one that is open to all who believe who recognize their sin and who have given their lives to God and received salvation through Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, whether you are at home or you are here, if you know that you are a sinner and if you know the need for Jesus in your life and if you have given yourself to Him, then you are welcome. You need not be perfect. Indeed, if you were perfect, this feast would not be for you. But we come as repentant people, washed in the blood of Jesus and made to be redeemed through His sacrifice. On the night of our Lord's death, he had a supper, his last supper on earth with his disciples. And during that supper, he took the bread and he gave thanks for it. And he broke it, saying, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. In a similar manner, later on, he took the cup. And after likewise giving thanks for it, he said, this is my blood. Drink this in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, the gifts of God for the people of God. If you have your bread ready and take, eat, remember and believe that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. Likewise, with the cup, take, drink, remember and believe 
that the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was poured out for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. Amen. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord and forget not all His benefits who heals all your diseases. The Lord our God is good and we are so grateful. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for your participation and for your patience in such an unusual time. Let us continue together our worship.